Hello, I'm Carol Wantrout with Comorgan. This video is part of the Getting Started with KS programming series and focuses on the web server. The KS web server is accessible independent of the IDE directly from a web browser or inside the IDE. Firefox will be used to demonstrate from a web browser. Typing in the PDMM's IP address from the entry screen opens the web server. The web server is password protected. Without entering the password, many settings can be observed but not changed. The default password is administrator, which can be changed by the user. Web server features include starting, stopping, and working with running applications, changing controller firmware, setting up the controller's address, resetting the controller to factory default settings, formatting the SD card, and setting up password protection. In addition, backing up and restoring the controller and AKD drive configurations to an SD card and access to the controller and drive operation status and diagnostic information. In the Applications tab, the Access sub-tab can be used to start cold start, which will additionally reset all retained variables to their initial values, or stop an application. Clicking on Auto Start, then Apply causes the application to start automatically when 24 volts is applied to the controller. Clear All Errors clears all active controller errors. In the Access sub-tab, clicking on the Access wheel takes a snapshot of key access positions. Clicking on the Access name provides an Access status snapshot. The Access Enable Disable status is shown by the Access wheel color. Inside the circle, the solid line represents commanded position, the dashed line represents actual position. When an axis or drive error occurs, the green wheel will turn red. The error can be cleared by clicking the text below the axis title. In the Log Configuration tab, the type of messages contained in the message log can be set. Setting the level at debug provides the most information, whereas setting the level at error provides the least amount. In the Log Data tab, the log files can be viewed. These messages can help describe the current state of a system and help identify any operation errors encountered during operation. Log data is collected and updated every 15 seconds. A new file is created when the current file is full. Clicking on the log will open it up in the browser. Log files are stored in the controller's internal flash memory. The User Data tab lists any application-generated files presently stored in the controller's flash memory. This is one way users can record machine operation data. These files are generated from the application code using the PLC Advanced File Functions. Clicking on the green icon downloads the files to your PC. The Shared Directories tab allows connecting the controller to a shared directory on a remote computer to read or write files. Both Windows and non-Windows file formats are supported. In the Settings tab, the Firmware sub-tab is for changing controller firmware. Note, if the controller has a drive side, such as with the PDMM, the drive side firmware is changed using Workbench embedded in the IDE. In the Network tab, the controller's IP address can be set when the rotary switch on the controller's front face is set to 1. The default address is 192.168.0.101. Note, for the other nine positions of the switch, position 0 will set up DHCP or Auto IP. Position 2 through 10 will set up IP address 192.168.0.102 
to 192.168.0.110. The new IP address is applied to the web server when the controller is rebooted. The File System tab resets the controller to factory default values. In the SD card slot, an SD card plugged into the slot on the controller's front face can be reformatted and cleaned of any existing data. The User Account tab allows resetting the password to the web server. In the Backup tab, both the controller and EtherCAT devices can be backed up to the SD card. Backup controller is used to back up the PCMM or the controller portion of the PDMM for storage or loading into another controller. The backed up elements are firmware, network configuration, retained variables, and application code. The backup can take several minutes to complete. The LED segment will sequence during the download. Do not power off the controller once started until completion. EtherCAT devices discovers all items on the EtherCAT network and backs up network topology information, AKD firmware files, and AKD parameters to the SD card. A matching AKD firmware package is required to complete the backup. If the matching firmware package already exists on the controller, it will be used for future backups. If the firmware package does not exist on the controller, you will be prompted to provide it. In the Restore tab, both the backup controller and EtherCAT devices can be transferred from the SD card to another controller. Restoring the controller takes several minutes to complete. Do not power off the controller once started. The controller will reboot at the end of the restore. Advanced allows you to specifically select the EtherCAT devices to restore. Using the Import Export tab, the EtherCAT backup can be wrapped up and exported to a computer. The Import button allows importing a previously exported file. The web server will show that the import and export is in progress and will let you know if the import or export was successful. The Error and Alarm sub-tab in the Diagnostics section shows all present controller errors and alarms when the refresh button is pressed. Only controller errors and alarms are displayed on this tab. Access errors will be visible on the KAS Application Access menu. The Hardware Status tab contains information about the controller hardware. Storage space displays the amount of memory storage space in megabytes. Used is the amount of file space currently being used in flash memory. Total is the total amount of file space available in flash memory. Available memory displays the amount of RAM memory available on the controller. CPU usage displays the current load on the CPU. If the load goes over 90%, the field turns red. CPU temp displays the temperature of the CPU in Celsius. If the CPU temperature is greater than the CPU warning limit, the temperature background color will be changed to yellow. If the CPU temperature is greater than the CPU's critical temperature, the temperature background color will be changed to red. The normal operating range is 0 to 125 degrees C. CPU fan present is either true or false depending upon if there is a CPU fan in the controller. Clicking the refresh will refresh the hardware status information. Clicking the reboot button will reboot the web server. Clicking the reboot button will reboot the controller. The crash report tab contains files with details concerning a system crash. These files may be sent to Colmorgan for analysis. Help opens up a file explaining in detail the functionality of each tab.
The web server is also available in the IDE for quick, easy access. No password is required when using it inside the IDE. The web server is also available with the simulator.